everybody. Today, we're going to make rag pudding. Never, ever, ever done it before. Let me just turn that camera around. I'm trying to not get my belly on it because it's huge. Anyway, what I thought were, I was thinking all day what we're going to do for the rag. And this is a traditional... Um, I don't even know if this is good for it, but I'm going to use... This is going to be my rag. And all it is is a brand new bought off Barnsley Market dish 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 rack dish cloth um so it's double and it's and it's double sided it says it's a shite bottom front pound sharp and they're just they're not good let's see if i can rip it off nope i'll just try finding some more scissors but i ain't got any so we're just gonna have to make it do uh it's doing it anyway don't need to be neat does it we've got some lengths to cut so what i thought were i've got four of these so i bought i think it was three quid for five of them off Barnsley Market. Um, so I just said to woman, I'll have five, because you always need a, you always need a dish cloth, don't you? Um, I hate them ones that you buy, you know, them shitty ones that you buy from Asda. I like, I like traditional me. Anyway, it's a good job I bought them, because now I can use them for red puddings. But the thing is, I want to wash them, but what I don't want to... Hey, I, could, I wonder if I could use that to tie them. It's just with it having the red on. That'll be all right, won't it? I'm going to do it anyway. I'm not going to throw it away. So, I might do, yeah, actually, I don't think I want that red, red on it. Right, so what I've done, I've cut it, and then I'm just going to cut down the middle. Uh, anyway, so, as you know, or maybe you don't know, recently I did a live, um, and I, I were in Oldham, uh, Oldham Indoor Market to the way. Called in to see Ian at um, Oldham Radio. I, I was just, I, I happened to be passing. So I just knocked on window there and said hello. It was lovely to see him and met another fella in there. Um, right, I don't know how long to cut them, but I'd say the average pudding's about that long, innit? So if I do it that wide and then I can fold it over. Uh, actually, you know what I should do? If I get clever, I could fold that like that, fold it like that, and then just cut it down middle. That should do it, shouldn't it? Uh, yeah, anyway, so I called in to see Ian. And then as we're walking down, as, on the same side as Oldham Community and on Inside Market. So we'll get six puddings out of this, one thing I think. But I've, I need some ties yet. So yeah, as we're walking through Market. Um, I think, because it's quite long, I think I'm going to cut that off there and then put it in half. Yeah, I was walking, oh God, just get to the story, sir, Jesus. Right, so I was walking through Market. And there's a there's a news agent at the bottom as you come out onto Enshaw Street. She always has like loads of really good books, like ex library books at back and everything. And then um, she, uh, I'm just going to cut this in half. Doing all right, Anna, so far. What do you think, everyone? <laughs> so we've ended up with a square like this. I think that's going to be enough. Wrap it round. Well, that's going to have to do anyway. So there's two. I don't know how many I'm going to make, but I'll do four. And then we'll get into recipe. So, anyway, so I'll stop there and add this book. I'll go and grab it in a minute and show you. Uh, if you didn't see the live, you won't know what I'm talking about. But basically, it's this book written by this lady, um, and she got she she covers the traditional um, traditional cooking. I'm gonna cut that in half because I reckon two ties either end. And uh, I'll go and get the book now because we've got the rags ready, aren't we? Uh, what I was saying, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put these rags in this. You know, in my trusty pan, because I don't have any kitchen utensils, I'm going to put the rags in there and soak them in some cold water. Right, so this is the book. It's called Taste of Oldham, and it's by a lady called Sheila Taylor. Now, I do not plagiarise on my channel for me history. I, obviously, I read, but I tell it in my own way. Um, Sheila has written a very, very good book. Maps of Oldham, photos of Oldham, the old Tommy Field. All done from Gladick Fields, 1830. I mean, how good is that? Um, there's old letters. But anyway, I'm, I, I'll be honest, I've not even had a chance to read it yet. There's just loads of stuff that I think is amazing in here. And I'm going to use some of it in the video for inspiration. But anyway, oh, look at them. Meadow, Dairy and Co for butter and tea. Curzon Street, Oldham, 1910. Mr. Thomas Morris standing left. Won prizes for his window displays. Oh, look. Right, anyway, let's get to recipes. I am going to read this book because I think it's going to be exceptionally interesting. But what we want to do today is meat rag puddings, which is this recipe here. Let me see if I can zoom down on it for you. 
that one there. Yeah, you can see it. So it says, these are often known as rag puddings because they are cooked in a cloth, which we've got the cloths. Half a pound of raw minced beef. It's a, you notice how it's in old as well, it's not in that new thing they make us do. One small chopped onion, one teaspoon of chopped parsley, I've got that. Pinch of mixed herbs, suet crust made with eight ounces of flour. Um, I'm sure I saw get myself raisin, but I've got the flour there, we'll go through that in a minute. And um, a seasoning and a thick gravy, it says mix beef, onions, herbs and seasoning with gravy. Doesn't say to cook it, so I'm going to put it in raw. It should not be too liquid. Roll out the suet crust and spread meat mixture in it. Roll up, keeping the filling away from the edges. Wrap in cloth, previously dipped in boiling water and floured. Oh, that's interesting. Good job I read that. Tie cloth, both ends. Oh, there you go. And put into boiling water. Two to two and a half hours. Topping up the pan with boiling water is necessary. Alternatively, it can be steamed. Served with brown sauce. I've got brown sauce. Or gravy and vegetables. Right, we need herbs. This is my herb cupboard. Bought all these. Well, all these I bought in big packets from um, the Asian shop on Gladick. But I've got my beef stock cubes. I bought these little things. They're right handy, you know, because it keeps on. You can put names on like I have. But I need parsley. I think that's it there in the back. I don't know if I like parsley, but the, re the recipe says we've got to use parsley. So we'll put that down. Um, what else did it say? It said other, other mixed herbs, didn't it? But I've not got any mixed herbs. Do you think I should put some of that Dunn's River all purpose seasoning in? What's in it? Salt, but no, it's got paprika in it. It's not going to be traditional, is it? I do like that, by the way, but it's just not going to be traditional. Right, let's go through what ingredient we've we've got. I got this today. So I went to Lidl this morning when I was in Barnsley, um, and I got that. It's lean beef mince it, 5% mm -hmm. fat, 500 grams. I don't know how many is half a pound, so I'm going to have to check that. Hopefully I've got enough. Um, so we're going to use that. I've got that plain flour, that was 49p, that beef by the way, I think would be £2.50. And then, I couldn't not get the original suet, because I'm going to obviously make my own thing. So I've got a Taurus ready beef suet. And look, it's got that woman on the back, it's right old fashioned. I love it. But I've used these before for dumplings, so I've got an idea of what I'm expecting. Parsley, I need an onion. Hopefully I've got one in this fridge. Yes, hallelujah, I've got one. Anyway, let's get the chopping board out. So we'll start by um, start by chopping this onion and I'll just talk to you about the stuff that's going on. So yesterday, oh I need salt and pepper, I've got that covered. Yeah, yesterday I went to Oldham and I did a live and I'm doing a video next week that um, stems from that. Um, you know I'm actually fuming about this, this you're not looking at TK Maxx the other day and uh, literally I've cut a couple of carrots and it's blunt already. Anyway, um, not this one, this this was left in house, this, the lady who had the house before me left it. Passed away, you know, um, and left everything in house. Um, I didn't have any other furniture, I would have had it, because um, her house was bleeding gorgeous, but I've had to do my own. Anyway, I was in Oldham yesterday, I went specifically to um, meet with Father Phil Sumner, who's the Roman Catholic priest of the church at top of uh, it's not on John Street it's on the corner of John Street it's on Union Street yeah or West Street no Union Street oh, I don't know actually I need to check on that anyway uh, the church is Our Lady of Saint Our Lady of Carmel and St Patrick's Church I really do hope I've got that correct it's such a long title Usually, I think they just shorten it to Our Lady and St. Michael. Um, anyway, I was meeting with the, the priest because a few people on the channel have... I'm just chopping this onion. You can see that, can't you? A few people on channel, or maybe it's... A, well, anyway, a few people have said to me over last year or so, can you do Our Lady, can you do Our Lady? And I, and I was concentrating on doing like Oldham Church, you know, like all the Church of England churches. And then the other week I got a message again. Um, I won't name him because I, I don't like doing that because you know it's people's privacy. He wants to make himself known. He can do, but um, he said, "Go, will you go and do the church?" So I thought, yeah. So anyway, I, I just thought I'll take both by arms and I'll just ring and I'll. Um, what I'm going to do now, by the way, I'm going to put the onion to the side and I'm just gonna get on with making the suet. Yes, yeah, so and I'd really like to come along and um, 
fill my church and I was babbling on with myself and uh, he more or less shut me up and went yes you can come and film it so um, I went on Saturday um, I have to tell you he's a wonderful man I've, I've never he's just really interesting to talk to about 350 grams really really interesting to talk to um, spectacular person is it definitely 350 grams? That seems a lot, because we're only on 105 now. Let me just have a quick look. Um, yeah, so he basically said, yeah, come along. I went along, and like I say, he's a lovely fellow. He opened the big doors at church, and I went in, and I never couldn't believe my eyesight when I went in. I just thought it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, or it was Delia Smith who said 350 grams. Right, yeah, definitely 350 grams according to our dealer online. The recipe in that book, by the way, I don't give you the suet recipe. Um, anyway, it's a long video, this one, people, so you're going to be with me a while here, I think. But obviously, I'll adjust the video for cooking times and everything. But you may as well see how it's done. Oh, cringe when you see how I'm cocking up. I don't want to put much more. Mind you, if I make a load, I can just save it, can I? I don't have to use it all. Right, there we go. It's actually 296, but I'm starting to panic with the amount of flour that's there because I've got to mix it yet. Um, I need 195 grams of suet now. I don't even know if there's 195 in this packet. 240. Um, yeah, so we're just going to get this open. Well, have you ever seen suet? When you... It's right interesting, look. It's just... All it is is just cow fat, I think. Is it fat off a cow or a pig? I'm not sure. Right, I want 175 in here, so I'm looking for 300 and... Oh, shit. Nearly 400 grams. And then what she says... That'll do. And then what she says is you've got to... <coughs> you've then got to start adding water and stirring it in, so that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to use this big spoon here. Um, so what was I saying? Yeah, anyway, I went into the church and... Uh, you can't see this, can you? I'm so sorry. I went into the church and uh, my eyes nearly popped out of my head. I couldn't believe it. As soon as you walk in, you'll see the video next week anyway because I'm doing the video, um, you know, the full tour. And actually, Father Sumner said he would be happy to come on camera and um, talk you around the church and tell you about the history of it. He's put some... Um, well, you know what, I'm not going to spoil it. We'll just wait for the video for what's in the church. But anyway, straight away, I gravitated towards the plaques on the walls. As you know, I'm quite interested in, like, the histories. And as I've said to you in previous videos, I'm just going to go with my hands. I'm just going to do it with my hands. As I've said to you in previous videos, um, for me, I mean, I, I enjoy being in churches. And I, I've asked if I can actually attend the service because I do like attending church services. I find it quite relaxing. Um, so I will be definitely attending a, uh, so if you go to that church and you follow the channel, you will see me there at some point over the next month or so, um, because I do want to do the video, and then, funnily enough, actually, next week I'm also going to be filming our lady, so I don't know which one I'm going to put up first, probably Shaw Road to be fair, because that's the order that I was doing them in. What do you think of me, uh, my skills so far? I forgot to put salt in, dinner. Don't matter. I'll put it in. Uh, I'll put the salt in the um, in the mixture. That don't matter, does it really? So, what was I saying? Let me just clean up. Andrew, I'm gonna have to bring you back. I'm doing a video, love. I'm making rag puddings. See you in a minute. That was my cousin Andrew. Right. Okay. Let's get cracking. So. Um, I think what we need to do with this now is basically just roll it and then we're going to roll it out shortly. But I think that's mixed enough. I'm going to just stick it on this plate over here and we're going to move on to mixing the beef and the uh, the gravy. Right, so I got these. Um, I've been having a bit of yoghurt recently and if you get them from, if you get these pots, you can reuse these pots. I've, I've done it for years. So I'm going to make the gravy in there. I think I paid... And this gravy granules is from Lidl. That's the uh, that's the kettle you can hear. I think I think they're about fifty nine p. These gravy granules. So the dead sheep. Oh, you know what? I just realised I've got bloody bisto in there. 
but it's pork and I wanted to keep it um, thing so I'm not going to bother putting spoonfuls in I'm just going to shake some gravy in add the hot water and then we'll get the meat together so just bear with so this gravy here let me put the camera up and show you it's quite thick but it says in the thing have your gravy thick it'd have to be won't it so it doesn't skip out of the bloody thing you know what i'm going to do i'm going to let that sit and cool down and then i'm going to so you steam it camera up and then i'm going to come back and do the rest of it while we're waiting for that gravy to cool down uh let me show you my new couch all right bobs yeah i had the fire on the other night um that's the couch that's going back to Dunelm. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's not good at all. But I'm telling you now, the Dunelm customer service so far has been exemplary. Can't complain at all. But this couch, I paid 240 quid for it second hand. I bought them um, pillars. If you want one, they're 17.99 from uh, they're in um, oh they're in the range now and the feather as well. Look, feather feather the gorgeous. Um, but what I like about this couch is how it dips. Bobby likes it. Don't you shit her? <laughs> she like it? Yeah, you do. So I bought this table from Willowwood um, Charity Shop on Ashton Road, uh, down near Waterloo area. Um, just facing uh, face it freezer shop. Anyway, it keeps doing this. This bleeding. I have to let it free alone. Anyway, this is the table. I paid 15 dabs for it. It's not for everyone, I get that, but I quite like old furniture. It's really heavy. It's solid wood. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to sand it down with that new sander I got from uh, from um, I, I, not Ikea. Got Aldi, £12.99 for a little sander. It's amazing. A detail sander. So I'm going to sand that down this week. And then I'm going to get, hopefully, I think the wood is like a nice, nice plain colour. So... I'm going to take all that off and then I'm going to get some wood wax and wax it. Right, let's get back to the puddings. Right, so we're going to need half of this. Um, I'm going to wazz it in that pan. Like I said, non-posh cooking. There's no, not pretending to be perfect here. We're just slinging it in, aren't we? Doing our best. Let me put this in the fridge, hang on. And then... Um, I imagine there's a beast in there and I imagine what you do then is tip the onion in. So that's the onion in. Really good these little packets you know. Um, if you want to get some, I got them from the Asian shop. Um, the one at the top of Chamber Road. I think they're about a quid for ten. They're really good because they <laughs> When you're not dropping everything on the side, they're really good. <laughs> so this is what we've got. I know you can't see, but you'll see me do the rag pudding and I'm sure you can keep up. You don't really need to see things. It's a bit snotty, this gravy, because it's very, very thick. But the recipe did say, didn't it? Thick gravy. So that's gone in there. Right, okay, so um, I think we're going to make four rag puddings. So let's just get this down here. I reckon this will be enough for four of me, possibly for more than four. What do you reckon? Should we cut it in like... Should we cut it into like six and then just see how we go? Because you know what? To be honest, I don't, I don't want it too thick. I've got a feeling that you're not supposed to have them too thick. Do you know what I mean? In fact, you know what I am going to do? Me, uh, my cousin Amy really likes puddings um she usually has them hollands ones you know the ones you get from chippy um so i might send her this video and then she can make her own can't she what i've decided to do is to do four four of these first and then i can clean this up and then we can get on with the assembling i think that's the best thing to do right let's go get on with assembling them so uh, again, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'll just wing it. What I'm assuming is I'm going to have to fill the beef down there and flop that over, flop that over. That might be too much. I think that's too much, me. I'm going to take that off. I think that's plenty. 
soon find out if I'm wrong, won't we? Now well, let's get this mixture in. So like I said, I'm putting the mixture in raw because nowhere, as far as I can see, does it say you have to cook it. And that's going to be enough because it needs to stretch over, doesn't it? I might have put too much, actually. Do that. Bloody hell, I'm only doing it. And look, everyone. Oh, I know it's best open. I have to plug that. <laughs> it's best open. Oh, for Christ's sake. Right, where's my thing? Right, let me just... I'm going to put my rag here. Put some flour on it. I'm going to sprinkle it all over. I think the flour must stop it from sticking to the rag, you know. I'm assuming that's what you do anyway. Right, let's just pick this up. Ooh, I think the, the, I think the secret of this, right, is don't be feared of it. Because I think if you're fighting to death, it'll all go wrong. Do you know what I mean? Can you see what I'm doing there? So I basically folded it in a parcel. Stretch it over like that so it keeps it tight. Where's that bleeding tie now? Right, give me that tie. Right, I've tied two together. And what I'm looking to do now is to wrap that round there so it can't come open. And that round there. I might even put three on it, you know. You know, just to make sure it don't move. Right. What we're saying? Let's put it on plate. That's one. I'll do the other four. Right, everyone. I think I might have balls up. Bear in mind, I've never ever done them before. But looking at them, I've only ended up doing three because I got fed up. <laughs> Couldn't be bothered cutting any more. And there's only me. I, I can only eat so many. There's a little bit burst in there. My thought is the water's going to seep in. Um, and this one is quite badly seeping there, look. So I think they might end up being ruined. I don't know what to do to, to fix it. I don't know if to... I don't think there's anything I can do. I think I've just got to try it and see what's what. So I'm going to cook them in this um, machine I've got here. It's a, an electric pressure cooker. And I'm going to give them half an hour in hot water and then just see what happens. Everyone, the puddings are ready. But what I'll show you this weather. Look, it's finished. But look at this weather. Let me put the light on. I hate my hands. They're horrible, aren't they? I don't hate my hands, actually. I love my hands, but... Woo. Oh, Jesus, it's freezing. You know what it reminds me of this? You know what it reminds me of? Would have been ice snow. Can you imagine that at the beginning when it's, it's, it's snowy outside? Oh, it's so cold. Right, anyway, we're going to do... <laughs> I know it's recorded, but we're going to do a live unveiling of the puddings. The only thing I need to do is just let the steam steam off for a bit, okay? So I'm going to come back before I open it. The smell that's coming off that steam is definitely pudding it. I think we can open it. Oh yeah, look. You need to get one of these steamers, the brill. It looks like there's been some leakage. But I suppose it depends on how bad that is inside the thing, doesn't it? Let me just pull some out. <laughs> it's not looking good, everyone. I mean... I don't know what they're supposed to look like, but as you can see, that one, when I pulled it out, I started... I'm just going to drain off some of this water. I'm going to open one live. Let me just open one live. Right. Shall we open this one? Oh, it's all bludged at the end. Oh! <laughs> oh, my God. Right, let me get the scissors. I know I could undo them, but I'm not going to do see what we're dealing with i think next time and i will do them again i won't be defeated but i think next time i'm gonna they might be 
alright actually. I've done the pastry too thin, look, can you see? I've done the pastry far too thin. But it is cooked. It looks like one of them Holland's ah one of them Holland's puddings. Move that over there. I'm gonna eat this now. <laughs> I am. I'm hungry. It looks like it's retained the gravy. I don't know how to get it out of this thing, so I'm just gonna flip it over. Like that. But yeah, because I've because I've done it too thin. probably should have watched like a YouTube video but I really didn't want to because I wanted to just try and do it myself but I think what I've learned from this is that well half my bleeding pastry is stuck on there so I'm going to pull that off but I think what I've learned from this is I can actually do, <laughs> I can actually do it but you know what I'm, I'm wondering actually whether I should have let them cool down a bit you know what, I'm wondering now whether I should have let it cool down before I tried to pull it out. I wonder if that is the secret. Because I pulled that out while it's boiling up. Anyway, listen, let's give it a try. Spoon out of here. I think the other ones, I'm going to let them cool down. Again, I, I don't know, do I? I'm not going to keep repeating myself. But I don't know, I don't know. You know I don't know, don't you? So this is my spoonful. Let me see. Oh my god, that, that is absolutely gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous, I'm going to eat it, the gravy is really thick, even though this one had burst, it's superb, and that, that pastry is too thin, but actually, um, it's got, but it's got thickness to it, um, let me just try and give you a closer look, <laughs> it looks atrocious, but I don't think that's a bad effort for my first time, I really don't. 